we're the Doric Quartet, and we have just finished recording uh, Haydn's Opus 64 String Quartets, which is the third set of uh, Haydn quartets that we've recorded for Shandos. And um, we're, we've had a great three days recording the, these works, and probably one of the most exciting things about the, uh, this disc is that we have started to play our classical works using uh, classical bows or um, transitional period bows. So these are a different type of bow from the modern bows that we normally use when uh, playing. And um, they've really opened a lot of different worlds of possibilities to, to us. Yeah, it's quite nice because we already, um, we, we work with um, um, Jonathan Cooper with um, Shandos uh, on a sound that's really personal, that keeps a lot of the human sides of, of it, so it's quite closed up and you, you, you actually hear the, uh, the, um, the, the craft of it. And with these bows, we feel like it's even more so, it's more clear. There's a magic. great deal of clarity you get yeah. with them, isn't there? And, and also a lightness sort of articulation, just a totally different repertoire of strokes that you can find with, with these bows. It's really, really interesting and it was, we didn't realise quite what a difference they were making till we heard the first playbacks of our first takes with these, mm. using these bows, and we're just like, wow, that's just a different world. Yeah, sound. we'll be yeah. using them for our next Mendelssohn disc too. Yeah. So that'll be nice. Yeah. We're slowly beginning to use them for more and more repertoire, so. I think Bartok's maybe, probably out of question. Bartok right? might be pushing the boat a little bit too far, <laughs> might not it? But they're very interesting bows. They're, they were made by a Mexican man who lives in The Hague. So they're actually very new bows, only about a year old but they are modelled on bows that would have been around at the turn of the 18th and 19th century. And I suppose one fun little fact about them is that the, the frog, which is this bit of the bow, um, the white bit, uh, which is normally made from ivory, elephant ivory, um, that's no longer um, really the, the thing to use because it's so um, protected. And um, But so uh, these are actually ivory from woolly mammoths, so we've been told that, that these bits of our bows are 30,000 years old, um, which is... Makes them quite special. Which is quite, quite fun, makes Haydn seem quite radical and quite new. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of radical, this, it's been amazing to be living with this particular set of the 64s for the last, was it two years? Mm. So we've been, and some of them we've been playing for a lot longer mm. than that, so it's amazing to finally be able to record them. and. Just to live with them in this sort of focused way, you realise what what a profound set they are, and how vastly different, and how imaginative he was at this point in his life. Yeah. Yeah, and also we've so it's the first set that we have recorded. So actually, we create a whole feeling of home coming back here. We don't as we have the sound set up already with the mics and everything. So it's really much like carrying on a, a journey. And also, you know, it's this beautiful. Place. So we come in with our slippers <laughs> and uh, we pack the fridge with food and so we really make sure that it has a great, a real feel of enjoyment uh, linked to it. It's kind of an exploration journey more than something we have to do. It's quite nice. Yeah. And Haydn really seems to help us on this journey because these pieces are just quite extraordinary in their variety and their different worlds that they take us to and uh, each it, of them right each, each movement even each yeah. movement it's we really were saying yesterday there's, there's not one movement that we don't want to record <laughs> yeah there's not one sort of even just okay a minuet <laughs> or something they're all amazing yeah. Yeah. 